Um, to what extent should governments go out on a limb to, you know, to, to provide implicit guarantee? Um, or should they, should they just say that you know, there are institutions uh, that are guaranteed and... and, um, and I think they should say it. I mean, I think where an institution is of a size that its failure would pose a systemic risk to society that was unacceptable, then, like it or not, it is guaranteed by the government. And to say it is just to admit what the facts are. And it's just the same as not to say it, it's just the same as Enron. You know, it's on your balance sheet in reality. So I think they should say it. Now, it has implications. It would also mean that the regulators mm. would pay a little more attention, I feel, to it if they knew that it was actually on the national balance sheet. What's your sense of uh, the FSA being subsumed back into the Bank of England? Is that a good move? And, uh, you know, you shuffle the cards. What is the reality? The same people effectively are there, more or less. Um, the Bank of England did not have responsibility before. They now have the responsibility. But the Bank of England were there what were they doing? Did they not pick up the phone and say to the FSA, hey, is there not a big systemic risk here? Or, or the FSA. Or vice versa. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I don't see that there's any excuse for not picking up your responsibilities when they can be clearly seen. And I, I find the posture of the current governor um, somewhat questionable in this, where he is um, being very outspoken in blaming the banks for what happened, but we seem to have forgotten. He was there throughout all that time. But do you think the regulators are facing pressure in the sense that they need to be seen as being visible, um, you know, doing the job that they were supposed to be doing? Well, I think they should just be doing the job, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, it's, and they didn't. And that It's their job to keep the country out of systemic risk. That is clearly the number one job, and they failed. Is that job better done with an independent FSA, or do you think that job will continue to be done well with, with the Bank of England subsuming the responsibility? I don't think it makes any difference. I think it depends on the people who are doing it and whether they're facing up to doing the job. And Final question. Looking back on the franchise that you had created in RBS and, and what it became mm -hmm. eventually, what is the one thing that you might have done differently? Well, I've given a little thought to this, and one thing's kind of difficult okay. to choose. <laughs> one, I think we, I think all of us as bankers should pay more attention to the macroeconomic issues. I think we do read the macroeconomics, but we don't necessarily debate it seriously enough and take action on it, particularly when that action involves um, perhaps going against the wishes of your investors. I think that in looking back, what would I have done differently? I find it difficult. I don't think I'd have done much differently as a chief executive. Um, as a chairman, I might have been a little more interventionist as a chairman. And, and why weren't you in your time? I felt that the bank as a whole was extremely successful and that the chairman's job is to um, put ideas forward, perhaps, but not to um, execute. That's the chief executive's job. So you would imply that RBS became a victim of his own success in that way? I think certainly RBS was somewhat a victim of its own success, but let us not run away from another essential truth every large bank in the world practically became a victim of its own success. And 
all of these chief executives throughout the world were very able people and I think they were probably also very committed and well motivated people but we can just go through the, the names and the places and um, and so what's the antidote to that how does a CEO ensure that they don't um, believe their own hubris for example <laughs> I think uh, perhaps just by reading history and uh, being very conscious that you're just another person like anybody else. So George, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you.